Let's listen in on the moment of silence as we look at this scene. Ground Zero, the National Civil Rights Museum where Kanji is and our Jerry Askin is covering the story along with Sasha Jones. We have full team coverage as to what's ahead for the next year as Memphis honors the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Tiffany Neely will give us perspective on the sanitation worker side of the story and how that Dr. King came to Memphis to honor their service. Let's go now to my colleague, Kanji Anthony, live at the National Civil Rights Museum. That's right. Joe, we have had some just chilling and moving moments throughout the day. We've heard from pastors. We've heard from leaders in the area like the mayor of Memphis. We've heard from uh, also just civic and social justice leaders as well. The laying of the wreath happened. You may have noticed the, the white wreath uh, that is replaced there each year. And that white wreath has been laid. And you just heard the moment of silence. And even before that, uh, what was so moving is they played played the I've been to the mountaintop speech by Dr. King. If you listen above, you can hear uh, that is a Memphis police helicopter. It's just kind of adding to the whole feeling here. Uh, you know that they are monitoring the situation because there are marchers who are coming here. And if you take a look behind me, you can see that the crowd is getting larger and larger. Uh, just moments before uh, that moment of silence, we also heard the song Amazing Grace. And like I mentioned, the I've been to the mountaintop speech that Dr. King made on April 3rd of 1968, just before uh, the, that fateful day on April 4th at 6.01 when he took his last breath. Uh, that speech has been known to be a prophetic speech. Uh, it's uh, where he actually um, maybe referenced uh, the, the fact that he just might not live another day. Now, our Sasha Jones has been out here all day. She has been following all the developments, uh, all the highlights that of, of what's been going on here at the National Civil Rights Museum. Sasha uh, continues our team coverage. Sasha. Kaji, that's right. This is a celebration about what's to come, but also a celebration of the past. 49 years ago today, right there on that balcony, this is where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. And today it's not just about remembering how he died, but also remembering how he lived. A celebration of what's to come. Hundreds gathered to kick off the year-long celebration leading up to the 50th commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s death. But as many look toward the future, the event's keynote speaker wanted those in attendance to not forget about the past. Well, I want us to always re remember what happened. Reverend Dr. Gwendolyn Boyd is a activist and engineer. In her speech outside of the National Civil Rights Museum, Boyd says the key to moving forward is learning from the lessons the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. can teach us. But they were persistent. And as we see that in every march and every sit-in, that they didn't just do it once, that they did it over and over and over again until the message got across or until they won a victory. The year-long celebration will be a collaborative effort between the National Civil Rights Museum and other organizations, including the city of Memphis. The 50th anniversary will culminate with a two-day symposium.